everyone welcome back happy ash wednesday if you are not from a tradition that celebrates ash wednesday i am not but it is something that i have come to really um, appreciate and that has helped me to have days of remembrance and um, to strengthen my relationship with god and so if you don't know much about it i highly recommend that you do some research and look up what ash wednesday is and keep an open mind and know that it's just one of these days that as a body, as Christians, as united, we can come together to recognize and celebrate something together. And it's just something that joins us and unites us in a way that I feel like the Lord really intended for us to be united. All right, today we're going to be in Genesis 24, 1 through 9, and I'm going to be reading from the Holman Christian Standard Bible. It starts off. Abraham was now old, getting on in years, and the Lord had blessed him in everything. Abraham said to his servant, the elder of his household, who managed all he owned, Place your hand under my thigh, and I will have you swear by the Lord, God of heaven and God of earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I live, but will go to my land and my family to take a wife for my son Isaac. All right, so we see here that first it says that the Lord had blessed Abraham. When you are obedient to the Lord, when you trust the Lord, He will bless you. And this is not a prosperity gospel thing. And this is not an easy obedience. We know that Abraham has paid a really hefty cost, that he has had to have his faith strengthened and strengthened and strengthened and strengthened and unbelievably strengthened to be able to get to this point of deep and profound obedience to the Lord. So, don't think it's just like if you, you know, invest this a little bit of money, the Lord's going to come right back and bless you. This is not a prosperity gospel thing. This is a obedience. If you are obedient to the Lord, no matter what it costs you, the Lord is going to bless you. And that is his love revealed to us. But do not think that's going to come easy because it doesn't. And if you followed along up to this point, you know that Abraham has paid a, a pretty high cost to receive these blessings. But it, he has learned to be obedient to the Lord and the Lord, that the Lord is worthy of his trust. And so then what we see here next is that Abraham is saying, do not allow my son to marry someone from the Canaanites. So Abraham has been in this land long enough to know that these people are not following God, Yahweh, and that they, are, they have wicked practices and that this is an early evidence of do not be unequally yoked. Abraham knows that Isaac is the son of the promise, that he is going, to, all of his descendants are going to be blessed, and that that promise is coming through him, and he knows that Isaac has to be married to someone that is from his people. He cannot be married to someone else. The promise cannot come through another line. It cannot come from someone who could potentially lead him astray to worship other gods. It cannot happen that way, and he knows this, and he knows that he cannot allow Isaac to be yoked to someone who could potentially lead him astray. And so that's really important that we pay attention when we know that God has given us promises and we know that that we are following God. This is God's love revealed to us. You don't yoke yourself to someone who doesn't believe God the way that you do because they can easily lead you astray. This is an intimate relationship you have with someone. And when you choose to knowingly marry someone now, the people can marry someone thinking that the person is on the same page with them and find out later that they're not. But if you knowingly go into it, knowingly expect that it is going to impact your relationship with God. That is the Lord's love revealed to us. I know that's not a popular message, but it is true. All right, we continue on in verse 5. The servant said to him, Suppose the woman is unwilling to follow me to this land. Should I have your son go back to the land you came from? Abraham answered him, Make sure that you don't take my son back there. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from my native land, who spoke to me and swore to me, I will give this land to your offspring. He will send his angel before you, and you can take a wife from my son from there. If the woman is unwilling to follow you, then you are free from this oath to me, but don't let my son go back there. So the servant placed his hand under his master Abraham's thigh and swore an oath to him concerning this matter. Okay, so what we see here is... The servant, which there's no clarity as to whether or not this servant follows Yahweh, but the servant is saying, okay, so what if I go and I find someone, but she doesn't want to come back? What do I do then? Do I take Isaac back? 
And the answer is no, you don't. And the reason that Abraham knows that Isaac is not to go back is because he does not want Isaac to go to this land where his people are from and settle there. Because what Abraham knows is that they are already in the promised land. They're in the land that the Lord has said he is going to give to his descendants. And Isaac doesn't need to leave. He needs to stay right where he is. And so he does not want to tempt him to go somewhere that he's going to be tempted to stay. Because it would be easier to be with his people than it is to stay in this land with people who do not worship the same God. And that it's just, it, there are going to be a lot of temptations. And so he is very clear. And here's the thing also, is that Abraham knows at this point that the promise is coming through Isaac. And for the promise to come through Isaac, he has to have children. For him to have children, he needs to have a wife. And so he knows that God is going to provide a wife for his son. And that she needs to be somebody that is from the same people, the same that worship the same God. And he's going to have to go back to his land to find that. And he's so confident in this that he tells this servant, you know what, I will let you free from this oath if you don't find someone willing to follow back. He's so confident that the Lord does not want Isaac to go to this land and that the Lord will provide a wife for him because he trusts God. At this point, they have such an intimate relationship. He trusts God with everything inside of him that God is going to provide him what he needs. And so there's not one bit of doubt in his mind. Now, the servant doubts, and I think that this is the Lord's love revealed to us, is that there are going to be times in our life that we have built an intimate relationship with the Lord, and the Lord has strengthened our faith over and over and over and over again to the point that he's given us promises, that he said things to us that don't look to a lot of people like they are going to come to pass because they either don't make sense or there's in, in the scene realm, we can't see those things happening. This land didn't even remotely, I mean, he just bought this, this property for Sarah's uh, burial. So why would anyone think that this land is one day going to be his? There's no reason for anybody to think that other than God has said it. But Abraham knows because the Lord has strengthened his faith to the point that there's no doubt in his mind now that whatever the Lord says is going to happen. All of his promises are yes and amen. He is always loving, always kind, and always good, and he will do what he says he's going to do. And it doesn't matter who believes him. It doesn't matter who trusts God the way that he does. It doesn't matter what anyone else says or what anyone else believes. The same thing will happen with us if we get to a certain point in our walk, in our intimate relationship with the Lord, where God is not going to make sense to other people and the things that he has promised us do not look like they're anywhere in sight and everyone's going to look around and say, yeah, I'm not really sure how that's going to happen because nothing looks like that. And people will, in some ways, like the servant, try to talk you out of what you know to be true. But here we see that Abraham's faith is showing us that we can trust God to do what he says he's going to do. And as we'll, we know later, like that God did do what he said he was going to do. And so this is just the Lord revealing his love to us that he is so trustworthy that when he says something, he will do it. And it doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter what other people say. If you have built that relationship with the Lord and time and time and time and time and time again, he has proven himself to you over and over. And you know you can trust him. And you know you've heard him because you've been listening to his voice for years and years and years that all of his promises are yes and amen, and that he will do what he says he's going to do because he is trustworthy. And that is his love revealed to us. All right, y'all have a good day, and I'll see you next time.